Hi crafters and Swifties, today I'll be showing you how I made the lover house from Taylor Swift's lover video. Are you ready for it? I start out by drawing the layout on the back wall and cutting it out. I then take the three main floors and mark where the walls will go in pencil. Then the exterior walls, the attic floor, the roof and the interior walls. I use a strip of paper as all of the baseboards and the wall molding in all of the rooms. I'm starting with the 1989 bathroom and as you can see I've already added the beam to the wall before adding the paper trim using glue stick. I add trim around the door and I've used my X-Acto knife to make the indents in the door. I then glue together the floor and the walls of the attic before painting the walls and the ceiling blue. For the floor, I paint half of it white and the other half beige, starting at the beam. Moving on to the fearless room, I start by making the arch and gluing a thin strip to the bottom. I leave the cabinets loose to make it easier to paint. I've scored them with my X-Acto knife to give them a bit more definition. And I've added some scrap pieces to the back of the arch to make it stand out a bit more. I painted a dark yellow and then glue the trim in place. I painted the trim brown before gluing it down. Some of the clips may be out of order. I jumped back and forth between all the rooms as I made this, so I've tried to focus on one room at a time to make it easier to follow. I painted the door the same brown as the trim and used a marker to add some details to the door. I then painted the ceiling white and the floor brown. To make the curtains, I took regular copy paper and sprayed it with water. While it was still wet, I folded it and let it dry before painting it and cutting it down to the correct size. In the lover bedroom, I started by painting the walls and ceiling pink and the floor a darker pink. I painted the trim gold before gluing it to the walls. I made the door by cutting it out of paper and painting it the same shade of pink as the floor and added details using marker. This video is definitely different than my other videos. I'm usually way better at showing you what I'm doing and explaining the process when it's my own designs. Here I'm trying to recreate a super detailed house and there seems to be a glitch because I'm fairly certain that some of my clips have run away to start a new life because I can't find them. So if anything seems to be missing, I'm so sorry. I made the wall drapes the same way as the curtains by folding the paper while it was wet and waiting for it to dry before I painted it the same pink as the floor. To make it easier, I cut out a piece of paper the same size as the wall and glued it to that piece and cut away the excess. I used this guide method with all of the curtains to ensure that I made them the correct size and to make them easier to glue down. I painted the curtains before gluing them down so that I wouldn't get any paint on the white part. I cut two strips as the curtain tie back. The curtains in this room have some detailing at the top, so I scrunched up a strip of paper painted it pink and then added some gold to the bottom before gluing it in place. I also added some gold to the bottom of the curtains. In the red room is where I sadly lost some footage, so I'll have to explain what I did without many clips. I started by painting the upper part of the wall red and used a pencil to scribble a pattern on the walls. I then painted the bottom part of the wall brown and used paper to make the pattern. I'll show this in better detail in the Speak Now room. The windows are made out of paper and I freehanded the design using a marker. I painted the floor and the ceiling red and used paper to create the beam design on the ceiling. So for the green Taylor Swift room, I started by painting the walls, ceiling and floor green. I then made the fireplace and added detail using paper before painting it. I wanted to challenge myself by not using a printer for the wallpaper, so instead I used a gold pencil to draw a diamond pattern before adding the molding to the walls and around the door.
I made a few changes in this project, for example, I decided not to add the exposed walls on either side of the Evermore closet, and instead to have the bedroom and bathroom be bigger. I've tried to include as many details as possible, but there are definitely things missing, like plants and lights. I also added molding to the ceiling. I used the same process as before with the curtains. I have been blasting Midnight since it came out, and I have been loving all of the clips from her tour, so I really wanted to make something Taylor Swift themed. And what project would be better for a miniaturist to make than the Snow Globe dollhouse from her Lover video? I will forever and always appreciate whoever decided that she should dance through a dollhouse, because I do not know what my backup project would have been. To make the attic, I painted the walls, the floor, and the ceiling brown, and then glued down strips of paper along all the walls and along the ceiling to imitate beams. Yes, I know the paint looks a bit patchy on the beams, but I did go back and paint over it again. For the Speak Now dining room, I started by painting the walls dark blue, and then sketching out where I wanted the wall molding to go, making sure to leave space for the three windows. I painted paper strips light blue, and started gluing them down using glue stick. As you can see, I'm using my X-Acto knife to trim them down after I glue them. The reason I'm not trimming them down before I glue them is that it would be a lot more difficult to add glue to and to apply the smallest pieces. This way gives me more control. As I knew nothing was going to intersect with the top piece of molding, I opted to save time by gluing down a long strip and then cutting and removing the smaller pieces at the end. I know she burned down the lover's house during her tour, but I had already started this project when I saw that, so there was no turning back. So this will be a tribute or homage to all of her previous albums. I wasn't very precise when it came to the pieces that went behind the windows, as I knew they would be covered by the curtains. You could also glue down one long strip if you'd like. I opted not to do this just because I was scared that I would run out of the blue strips of paper and not be able to mix that exact shade again to make more. I'm using the same method on the side walls where I glue down a long piece and cut and remove the pieces at the end. This is the room that almost broke me. The person who designed this house is my nemesis, or I'm their biggest admirer, I can't really tell. Do you see how much detail the walls have? The inside wall was the most difficult when it came to planning how the molding should look. There wasn't a lot of space to work with, and I had to compromise and make the door a lot smaller than the other doors in the project so that the wall molding wouldn't be a different size to the rest of the room. This is officially my longest video yet, beating my kitchen tutorial by 6 minutes. I actually cut this down from six hours of footage. Also, speaking of kitchens, Taylor, where is the kitchen in this place? You have two living rooms but no kitchen? I painted the ceiling dark blue and added molding to it. When it comes to the curtains, you know what I'm gonna say all too well by now. I made the white backdrop and then painted the curtains dark blue. I tried to give it some pattern by dabbing brown on top, because of course my nemesis decided that this room should have patterned curtains to further torture me. Like, why you gotta be so mean? I used this string that looks a bit like rope as the tie backs. I painted it gold and then glued it in place. Once the curtains were done, I moved on to the rug. I made it by painting a piece of paper the same dark blue as the walls and then cutting it down to size. I added a gold border using the same gold pencil that I used on the walls in the green room and I also added some along the edge of the rug. I painted the floor brown and glued the rug in place. To make the folklore hallway, I started by painting the walls purple and then using yellow and white to create an abstract pattern. I added a strip of white paper at the top and the bottom of the walls and around the doors. I made the doors using white paper.
and I made sure to add some lavender haze to the ceiling and painted the floor brown. Because the walls have so many details in this project, I had to finish all of them before I could start gluing anything together. The Evermore closet is just white walls and brown flooring. I also added the same white trim along the top and bottom of the walls. Once all the walls are done, we can finally glue everything together. I started by gluing down the left outer wall and then the ground floor, followed by the inner walls. It's easier to glue the floors in place without having the right outer wall in place, so I leave it until the end. I make sure to glue all the curtains in place as I go. Once the inner walls of the bedroom and the bathroom are in place, I can glue down the attic floors and walls. I also glue down the left side of the roof, leaving the right side open. I do this so I can add the movie screen sheet they have hanging on the wall and the round window. I made the window out of paper and painted it brown and glued it to a dark blue background. I then made the sheet by cutting a piece of paper down to size and then spraying it with water to be able to get the draped look of it hanging on the wall. I left them until the end so that I wouldn't risk messing them up as I glued everything together. I then glued down the right side of the roof. I also made sure to paint all the borders between the rooms dark brown. Now you may be wondering, what am I going to do with the outside? Or more specifically, the back? Well, I decided that it was sad that Midnight didn't get its own room, so my solution is that the back of the house will represent the Midnight's album. I started by painting the back a midnight blue before starting on the outside walls. To make the siding, I started by sketching out where all the siding would go and then started gluing strip after strip of paper down, starting at the bottom and making sure to overlap them. I then used my X-Acto knife to trim off the excess on the edges. To make the roof shingles, I took strips of paper and cut into them about 90% of the way and glued them down, making sure to stagger the shingle pattern and overlap them as I worked my way up. I then trimmed the edges again using my X-Acto knife. To finish off the top of the roof, I used one flat strip of paper that I folded down the middle to cover both sides of the roof equally. I then painted the roof gray and the walls white. Now you may think we're done with the outside of the house, but I'm a mastermind and I still have a bigger plan for the back. I think the clean look of Midnight Blue is really pretty, but it's a bit of a blank space, so I want to make it a bit more bejeweled by adding all of the album names. I cut them out of vinyl, but I didn't have the perfect shade of blue for Midnight's album, so I had to paint that on. And you can call it what you want, but I think it looks great. I know that I'm not adding these in order, but I had to do it this way to get the placement right. I wish I could add that soundbite of Taylor singing all the album names, but we will make do without it. And of course, I had to add Taylor's version. Now on to what we've all been waiting for, the inside. So most of the furniture in this project are made out of clay. I usually try to avoid using clay in my videos because I'm no expert when it comes to clay, but the scale of this didn't give me many options. I won't be showing you a video of me sculpting the pieces because most of them are smaller than my fingers and you won't be able to see anything anyway, but I will explain as much as possible. I made everything out of white clay and then painted it after assembling it. So I'm starting with the folklore hallway because I want to be able to glue the stairs in place first as they're so delicate and not be concerned that I'm going to knock something over in the other rooms as I'm gluing them down. I made a cane the same height as the wall and marked where the steps should go. I made the steps by cutting a circle into triangles so that the outside would have a curved edge. I then glued all the steps in place and then added spindles and a railing. I made a round clay support at the top and the bottom so that the stairs would have a larger surface area to glue in place. To make the hanging clothes in the Evermore closet, I cut out a strip of paper and painted it yellow. I then accordion folded it before adding glue to the back and folded it back up. 
This will act as the clothing pieces and is still stuck together at the back so everything will stay in place. I cut some of them into different length skirts and then some into dresses and jackets. This does not need to be perfect, it just needs to look like different lengths of clothes. For the clothing rail I took another cane of clay and painted it brown. I then took some steel wire and coiled it around the clothing rail to imitate the look of hangers. I glued the clothes in place in the back of the closet and then glued the clothing rod on top. I made a ladder out of clay and painted it brown before gluing it in place. I also made a little cubby out of clay and glued that to the wall. In the bathroom, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the fishbowl in the corner. I had first thought about using a clear marble, but it ended up being too small, and then I found the perfect thing, a hollow glass bead. I've actually had this in my drawer for about five years, and I haven't had a chance to use it, so this was fate. I used clay to flatten out the bottom of the bead, and then made a little platform and a ladder. I painted them silver using alcohol ink. I cut out a mirror and then added a frame using clay that I then painted gold. I made a cabinet, the sink, a bench, and rolled up towels. I painted them all the same shade blue as the walls and glued them in place starting with the fishbowl. In the real house, they have benches on both sides of the cabinet, but my room isn't deep enough for that, and I decided that it would be too hard to see the details if I put the bench on the other side of the cabinet. Next up is the bedroom. I started by making the bed. I made the bed and headboard separately and then glued them together. I made the pattern on the headboard with a knife and then gently made indents where the lines intersected. I painted the headboard and the base of the bed the same pink as the floor, I made the bed and the bed frame by layering two pieces of clay on top of each other and then adding a strip of clay towards the top to make it look like sheets, and then sculpted pillows on top. I added little legs that I painted gold. I made the chair by having a circular seat and then rolling out two pieces of clay that I stacked on top of each other. I painted it pink and then added gold legs made out of clay. I made an arch table that they have by the window and painted it the same pink as the floors. To make the vanity, I made the stands out of clay and then added a piece of clear plastic as the tabletop. I cut out a round mirror and painted the edge gold. To make the stool for the vanity, I made a pink round seat out of clay and then used steel wire as the base. I painted it gold using alcohol ink. The nightstands are a quarter of a circle with two straight sides. I painted them white and then added details in gold. You can now glue everything in place. I also made this cute little rotary phone, but I soon realized that it was too big. So I made a smaller one. For reference, here's what the big phone would look like in the room. And here's what the smaller phone looks like. 
In the red room, I started by making a chaise lounge. I painted it the same red as the room and added gold legs. I made very simple armchairs that I painted red with gold legs. And a little round poof that I added legs to. Then of course you need a guitar. I made the side table and coffee table by making a circle top and then an oval top that I painted black. I then cut out different lengths of cane for the legs that I glued all along either side of the tables. I then painted the legs gold and added gold all along the edge of the tables. I glued everything in place and then I realized that I'd missed the fireplace so I made one the same way as in the green room and glued it in place. In the fearless room I started by making the cushions for the window. I then made the table and two chairs followed by the side table. I painted the trash can yellow and then added details in silver. I made the magazine holder for the walls out of paper that I painted brown. To get crisp lines I colored a separate piece of paper and glued it on the front. Now let's talk about this rug. I had the hardest time trying to recreate it. This was my first attempt. I tried painting it but I couldn't get nice lines and then this was my second attempt and the lines were better but I don't feel like the colors are right. In the end I decided to go with my second attempt because I was out of options. Here are the tiny tiny little toy ducks that I made. I know there are supposed to be four but it was difficult enough to make these three and I like the look of three better. Here they are in my pinky finger for reference. I made the game boxes out of paper and glued them together. I made the wall shelves out of cardstock paper and then painted them white. Lastly I made the floor poof out of paper and painted it yellow. In the green living room I started by making a basic coffee table that I painted brown before moving on to the couch. I made the base on the back of the couch and added armrests to either side. I then made the cushions to both the back of the couch and the seats for a total of 8 cushions. I sculpted the pillows in place on the couch, 3 on either side and 1 in the middle. I painted the entire couch green and then painted the pillows different shades of green. I made a simple armchair that I painted green before starting on the drums. I painted the sides of the drums black and left the middle white. In the video the bass drum is black but I decided to leave it white to show the details better. As you can see I only ended up using 4 out of the 5 drum pieces I made because I realized she didn't have a full set in the video. I glued them together and then painted the edges silver. I'm not adding all the supports a real drum set has because I know I would accidentally break those supports in this scale so I'm adding the bare minimum. I made the cymbals again I made 3 and ended up only using 2. I made a fire guard using clay that I painted gold. In the Speak Now dining room I made a simple oval table and painted it dark blue. I then made the basic shapes of the chairs and painted them dark blue. I made v-shaped legs for the back and regular legs for the front and painted them gold. And finally the attic. I started by making the frames. I cut them out of cardstock and then made a super simple design using glue. I then painted it gold using alcohol ink. The projector is made completely from paper except for the lens which is made out of clay. I then folded some boxes out of paper. I stacked three for the projector to stand on and one that is open that I added tissue paper to. For the covered pieces I made them by cutting out and gluing random shapes together that I made out of chipboard but you could use anything. I then dipped tissue paper in watered down glue 
and applied it to look like a sheet was covering old furniture. I made three chests out of paper, but I ended up only using two of them. You could also easily make this out of clay. Speaking of clay, I made a vacuum, luggage, and the base of a lamp out of clay. I painted the vacuum black and silver. I then painted the luggage blue with silver details. I made a lampshade out of paper for the only lamp I have in this project, and glued it to the steel wire sticking out of the base of the lamp. I made two chairs out of clay that I painted black and grey. When it came to the two fans, I was not sure what I should do. I ended up winging it and making them out of steel wire. For the smaller one, I made the wheels out of clay that I painted with silver alcohol ink. Now that we're done with all the rooms, the only thing left to do is to make the front door. I made a wall piece that extends a little bit into the living and dining room. In the video it extends a bit more, but I didn't want to cover the drum set as much. I sketched out where I wanted everything to go and used paper strips as the siding, just like with the exterior walls. I made the door by stacking two pieces of paper on top of each other. I cut out my door pattern out of the top piece and left the bottom piece with just the rectangular shape of the door. I then glued the door in place and used a paper strip to frame the door on three sides. I made the windows by coloring a piece of paper light yellow using marker. I then used the same thin strips of paper as I used around the door to frame the windows. I glued them straight onto the colored piece of paper and then cut them out before gluing the finished windows in place on either side of the door. I added a handle and a mailbox made out of paper and clay. To make the roof over the front door, I cut out three triangles and glued them together. Then starting with the front, I added the roof shingles and cut off the excess before starting on the sides, making sure to leave a slight bit of overhang. Once done, I cleaned up the seams by adding a bent strip of paper to cover the seams where the sides met. I then painted grey before gluing it in place. I make the two columns by wrapping strips of paper along the top and bottom of two pieces of chipboard that I cut to size, and paint them white. I cut out a rectangular platform that I painted brown for the porch and glued it and the columns in place before gluing the entire piece to the front of the house. And we're done! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it to the end, let me know what your favorite album or song is in the comments. Did you manage to catch all 19 song references I made? And let me know if you survived the Great War and managed to snag a ticket to the Eras Tour. And to Taylor, all I can say is, look what you made me do. Subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss my next video. Bye!